Hey everyone, welcome back to Green Water Fish. I hope y'all had a great Thanksgiving. Um, yeah, I had a wonderful one, and I just wanted to, um, I just wanted to say that we should all remember what we should be thankful for, because nothing should be taken for granted. Um, anyways, so for today, um, I guess this video's main topic is gonna be this planted tank, and the question is. Where is this tank gonna go? Well, for me, I just wanna update you guys on this decision that I made, which is a really hard one. The decision was to not have this tank anymore. For those of you who have watched my prior video on um, the tank journal that I posted a couple of months ago, this tank had a lot of sentimental value, especially because it is the first tank that I had as a young adult, I guess. Um, and this tank has been through a lot with me for the past two years. I have experimented a lot of different things. I have experimented with DIY carbon dioxide. Um, I tried a carpet, it worked wonderfully. And then I tried to do a simplistic um, kind of a thing with mainly low light, um, low maintenance plants because I didn't really have that much time uh, for the past one year. And then I tried some star grass, tried some floaters, I tried uh, mixing beta in my community tank, which I have never done before, um, but the beta seemed to be doing very well um, with his tank mate, obviously, and is actually thriving. Um, and I also experimented with, you know, DIY root taps and everything, so I really, really enjoyed this tank, I have to say. Now, the decision to not have this tank um, was made recently because I will be anticipating a huge move in the near future. I don't know when, I don't know where, but I know there will be a move and it would be very hard to take this tank with me. And also, with such a small tank being just 10 gallons of water, it is actually very hard to maintain. You would think that a smaller tank is probably for a beginner, but it's actually not true. The smaller the tank, the harder it is to maintain, especially I'm talking about planet tank. So usually, mini tanks or really small tanks are usually more suitable for advanced um, planet tank keeper just because the tolerance of error in small setup is very low meaning that you can make a very small mistake and a water parameter can just change very drastically and can screw up everything so that's one thing so it requires constant tweaking, very con time consuming. It needs you to be very observant of what's going on in a tank. Um, you have to constantly keep up with the water changes and water parameter changes just because this space is so small, it can't tolerate any changes and um, makes everything more sensitive. It makes sense, right? Just think about the ocean. Ocean is extremely stable because it has a huge capacity. It can tolerate a lot of air. But in a smaller setup like this, it's very hard to maintain. And another thing is that I wanted to start a bigger setup just because um, with a bigger setup, it will allow me with more space to play around with aquascaping, to experiment with different um, plants and I can arrange the aquascape with different materials. I can perhaps mix the usage of um, driftwood and various different kinds of stones to create a different texture. Um, but with this tank, the space is very limited, so I can't do too much about it. The third thing is that this tank is meant to be a low-tech tank, meaning that it doesn't have any high, quote-unquote, high technology. Um, it doesn't have, you know, carbon dioxide, um, tanks, infuser, it doesn't have canister filter. Well, I'm not saying that these things are necessary because even for a basic setup like this, you can do a lot with it. But in the future, for the future tank, I do want to start working with some higher tech tanks just so that it will give me a little bit more room to play with different plants and different setup. 
and it'll just be a little bit more flexible for me. And lastly, because again, this is a small tank, it's really hard to do anything around just because the space is so narrow and I planted this tank very heavily. So it was hard to do anything. I can't really clean up the tank that well. Um, I can't catch the fish at all, ever. I don't even try because there's no point. There's, you can't catch any fish in this setup, okay, with this heavily planted tank. So with a bigger tank, um, ideally I'll be able to clean up better, change scape better. If I need to swap fish for whatever reason, it'll be easier to catch them. So these are some of the thought process behind this very hard decision, but um, um, I found a very good fish keeper. Uh, she's willing to take, take this tank from me. And today I just wanted to clean up the tank a little bit just to get everything ready for her. And tomorrow when I'm setting up the tank ready for her to take away, I'll also show you guys what I do to get it ready. Of course, it was a short travel distance. I don't have to, you know, unplant everything, take all the fish out, bag everything. I don't have to do that because she really, live, she really lives really close to me. Um, so I can literally just give the tank to her as it is, but I still need to do some prep work today. Alright guys, so today is the second day where after overnight, after the filter has done its magic, getting rid of some uh, solid particles and stuff in the water. So now the water looks clear, but I don't think it matters because with a transfer, it's going to stir up all the junk again. But right now I'm just going to take apart the tanks um, and leave as much stuff in there intact as possible. So um, hopefully the transfer doesn't impose too much harm to the, um, the plant and the fish. So what I did was that I took out a filter. Um, well, I first disconnected the like. I took out the filter, took out a heater. Um, and then I drained the water to here. Because it was a short trip, so I plan not to take out all the fish and plants so that they don't get unnecessary injury. But just because if plants are exposed to air for a long time, they dry up really quickly. So what I ended up doing is that I put a layer of saran wrap on top of the tank, like so. So it kind of works as a um, kind of a airtight sealing kind of a thing to retain moisture and temperature as well. 
so it can help the plants survive a little bit longer um, during a short transfer so they don't dry up too quickly because normally if you ship plants you want to put them in a sealed bag and with a little bit of um, water or moisture in there just so that the plant doesn't die off because of um, they dry up too quickly so with that it controls temperature and also retains moisture so it's a win-win situation um, but yeah this is what a tank looks like right now pretty empty all the fish are still in there um, yeah I'm just waiting for the buyer to come here and we'll move it downstairs and give it to her yay so this is the final look of this tank. Um, hope you guys are happy with this update. Um, I know that if I were you, I probably would like any update that's going on. Um, so I figure that you guys will be probably will be appreciative of this update video, and hopefully it's helpful for you um, in terms of choosing your first planted aquarium setup. So yeah, let me know what um, other ideas you have. I don't know when or how I'm gonna start my second planet aquarium. So feel free to post any suggestions or recommendations down below in the comment box. Um, I would love to hear your opinion on this matter. Yeah, so thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.